Welcome to another episode of the Get Real Podcast. I am Adam Chase Rennie. And I am Christine Chen. We're talking to Florida Christine Chen, actually. Yes. She's Key all Largo. Florida now. <laughs> I'm in Key Largo, courtesy yeah. of my good friend's parents, Darren and Christine. Um, I think it was a casual conversation. And they're like, yeah, we have a place in Key Largo. And if you ever want a writer's retreat, you know, like, ding. I was like, hey, actually, this sounds like a great idea because I do want to take a writer's retreat. So you're actually um, seeing me at my writer's retreat. I have two other awesome people who are hiding inside. I try to get them on the podcast, but they do not feel like it. So that's uh, Eva Contis. Um, She's a filmmaker and writer and also my co-writer who is in this other room back here, uh, Camille Gladney, who co-wrote uh, Ersley. So they're all hiding away, writing probably. And uh, here I am talking to you. <laughs> and we're here. And you know what? There, there, there needs to be no more. You know what I mean? Like, it could just be the two of us. And that's so, yeah, totally totally fine. the two of us. Yes. And that's the way this podcast was meant to be. But we love our, we love our uh, yes. podcast guests as well. And also Camille is a friend of the podcast. She's been on yes. once, maybe yes. twice. She's been on like twice, two or three maybe. times. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we love our guests, but you know what? We also love each other's company. And <laughs> uh, Christine has, is she's in uh, Florida. There's not much going on with me. So mm-hmm. this is just yeah. going to be. Christine more episodes. Oh, so. yeah, no, we've been in Florida just writing. Um, you know how it goes. It's funny because it's we're this is probably gonna we're gonna the Ursley chapter. I actually wrote a blog about it. I'll post in a, um, in a day or two. It's crazy because it's slowly coming to an end. Oh, um, really? Obvi- well, obviously, there's still a whole year of festivals and where it's going to go and then the release and all that stuff but in terms of like post-production it's pretty much there and in my blog uh you guys I basically reflect on the fact that this is it's really scary at this point it's scary because prior to reaching this point doing our final mix I'm doing my mix on the 23rd um, of this year uh, of this month so in a few days, I'm going to be driving up to Oxford, Mississippi to meet my sound designer mixer, Jeffrey Reed of Taproot. And uh, we're going to sit in his like setup and just because it it's different listening on a real, you know, setup with the surround sound and whatever he's hearing besides because how I'm cue seeing this has been these earbuds that you see right here. And like watching it on my phone, watching on my laptop, watching it on the plane, watching all different places. But like, there's nothing compared to like being in a session and being able to say, hey, wait, 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 let's rewind. But can we tweak this one part? And it's, and it's all about the details, right? It's, it's just something can literally like I'm right now. And it's great. I'm at this point where I'm literally nitpicking like frames. You know, okay, let's move, shift this one sound by two frames. Let's shift this one sound by a frame. Who knows if anybody will ever pick up on that, but they'll know if it's wrong, you know? So well, because they'll know it's wrong because you know it's wrong too. Yeah. This is this is a movie for you as well, as much as it is for the audience. So yeah. Yeah. I, I can I, I can see why the perfectionist sort of has to has to be very tried and true, especially when right. it comes to sound design. Because yeah, sound sound is good. so important, especially in a thriller, in in a um, suspense type film. Every second, sound counts. is everything. So I'm sitting there thinking of like, okay, uh, just making sure there's footsteps in certain parts, or rustling of leaves, or let's let's move this one splash just a little bit earlier and stuff like that. So I'm just going through and nitpicking it, and it's just scary because, you know, once it's once we have the master and it's delivered that's it like I can't you know you yes technically you can always pick it back up and be like I'm going to do some more editing but it's very faux pas you're not supposed to do that but and also like prior to this moment 
I'm able, I was able to always say, oh yeah, no, it's a work in progress, you know, oh, it's not final yet. We're still making tweaks, you know, and I had that to hide behind, but like now I don't, the moment the master is done, that's it. Like I have to live with the results, good or bad. And, you know, hopefully people will love it and everything, but you know, who knows? Is there something relieving about that though? Is there something like, sort of like, it's, I don't know because it is sort of your child <laughs> in a way. Yeah, I guess it's so. hard for you to let it go. Maybe it's bittersweet. It's extremely bittersweet. Okay. Um, it's there's times I'm like, thank God I don't have to watch this for the millionth time. I have watched, I have this hard drive <laughs> has gone with me everywhere. And I was writing down like where it's gone. And so it started off in like what? It's been to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's gone to Shreveport from Shreveport. My first set after that was in LA. So it's been to all, we drove there. So it's been to Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, to all the way to, to Fraser Park in LA. And then after that, I was, I went back to Shreveport, then flew out of there to Virginia. So it's been in Virginia and then back again to, um, to Shreveport, Austin, and um, New Orleans, and then yeah, it's it's been everywhere, and uh, it's probably been to more places than some people have ever been <laughs> their entire life. More, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say more than any places I've been to. I've only yeah, been to so it's it's kind of funny. Park. Yeah, it's I call it my um my gnome, my little uh my yeah. little uh hard drive gnome, you know. Yeah. And it's yeah. going to be weird that you're going to work AD sets and not have something else to do. To do, uh, yeah. And I, I, I reflect I, about that. Uh, I was thinking, like, this year has been nuts. And I, to the point where it almost feels like we did Ursley last year. But it does. Yeah. And because I was actually trying to get information for a friend about some crew member from a different set. And I was like, oh, that's from last year. It was this year. past summer. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. That's nuts. Yeah. And I went back and tracked it down. I was like, oh, shit, it's, it's this year. And I, I look back at the timeline and I'm like, wow. Um, finish the script. End of December of last year. Yeah. 2020. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's why yeah. we talked about that. Yeah. went to Hawaii. I went to Hawaii to, and Camille and I had a big, not even say fight, but a moment where I was messing with the script and she wasn't done with it and it was messing with her brain. And this was December. And we we finished the script at the end of December. And then January started to raise money. And we went from greenlit to not greenlit to greenlit. So like greenlit in January, it was early, we got greenlit. And then to not greenlit in February, to raising the money in March, to being officially ready to go on April 1st, then on set prepping the week of my birthday, which was like April 28th, basically, shooting in May, wrapped on the 14th, on my way to our post wrap party, May 17th in New Orleans, and then I gave myself a month and a half of like balls to the wall editing before I was yeah. on a set again. I was in prep in July right. for the set in LA. And then I was on set again in LA uh, in, on August, which is crazy because I was still editing every night when I came back from rap um not like major editing because I'd done the bulk of it it was like tweaky tweak editing so yeah every night after wrap and these are like 13 14 hours you know how it goes I would stand there and just QC my film and and edit and it's just it was just it's just crazy how that how that is and then now to get to this point which is December what day is it 18th 19th 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 and I'm about to December 23rd do the final master of the mix and be done with it all it's less than a year wow 
Is that? That is just nuts. nuts. Yeah, yeah, it's nuts. And so it is. It is bittersweet. It's um. It's you look back. I look back, and I'm like, this 2021 for me has been a blur, to say the least. And I'm very proud of what our team has been able to be able to accomplish. Um, and what I've been able to accomplish and, uh, tr- and now I'm bringing in 2022 at a writer's retreat, trying to cook up the next idea, you know? So, um, it's, it's crazy, but I, yeah, I worked been, for you this far. Yeah. It's worked so far. So I'm, uh, this time around, it's been kind of weird. Cause there's, I've been pulling back scripts I haven't looked at in like years and, it's as if a different person wrote it and yeah. I don't know how to jump back in. Oh, it's been difficult. So yeah. I jumping back thing. into that mindset. Yeah. Really? I how read, did you, I read back like short stories I wrote in high yeah. school yeah. and I forgot that I wrote this, like, because I, I had this literature and film class and we read a book on Al Capone and I wrote my own mob story. Like I wrote my own and I had, I completely forgot about it and I read it and it's actually like not terrible. I was, yeah. I read it and I was like, hang on a second. What? And I, I didn't even remember it. I, I sort of just like phased it out of my head. But then with that, I also found like five other short stories that I wrote and also like essays that I wrote. And yeah. I'm like, what in the fuck is this? This is awful. No good. But I guess there's no such thing as a bad idea. It's just a bad outlook on on, sure. on, on that idea. So, you know, it, it, it's just kind of one of those things. Have you have you been through your old catalog? And yeah, so I've I've. I've grabbed out some and my my reaction has been like oh this is really good (laughs) really oh that's awesome yeah but to the point where i'm like it's so good i don't even know how to jump back into that brain space like i was a different i felt like i was like i don't so there's this that wine script for example i don't i can't even begin to think of how how to speak in the wine speak anymore it's been that long you know so i'm like if even if i were to try to continue on i it would take a good week for me to revisit the materials the research stuff the documentaries to get into that world in that mindset to write that way because it's so different from like it's different like within root because i live that right and so i speak that language and it's always there, but I'm not a sommelier. So I, to write Dr. Conti, it has been like, I have to be a different person, entirely different person almost to write it. And so, but I pulled it out being like, damn, this is really good. How the did I write it? You know? So, uh, so it's been, I've been having to jump around, um, to scripts because I'm also developing a, uh, this time around, one of the goals I had was to kind of start outlining seriously um, this TV series that I, I want to pitch um, about uh, how I kind of grew up. So it's writing about For what real? I know. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So, so it's called uh, tentatively called uh, makeshift fam, but uh, it has I love to that be- title. I yeah. love you it. like it. Okay. I love that. Ah, I love that. title. <laughs> oh, good. Um, but like I, it's about how reflecting back to my childhood, I never, with holidays and stuff, everybody always has their extended family with them or they go to visit them for the holidays and being close to the holidays. That was the one thing I never had was our holidays were our makeshift family who were these five families not related whatsoever but they are closer to me to a certain degree than my blood family is because they are who we spent holidays with and they're like my cousins my uncles and aunts and stuff but they are not related whatsoever and I just found that to be a very unique experience uh versus you know most people have their extended family because all my extended family is in Taiwan 
Taiwan and the to, to have them make this trip to the U.S. is I think the last time they did it was like 15 years ago, you know, 15, right. 20 years ago. So, um, I mean, I luckily did visit them about two years ago before the pandemic. Um, but I mean, when the next time I'm going to be able to visit is questionable. Like my parent, my parents are actually in Taiwan right now. Um, that's why for Christmas, I will be making my drive to Los Angeles to spend time with my other creative friends and to write and places to live. Yeah. To look for scope out places yeah. to live and yeah. Stuff like that. So shit. Shit. I know. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So it's, I've never written a TV Bible, I guess is what it's called. So it's been a lot of research. Yeah, like, I mean, the approach of just writing a TV pilot, I can't even wrap my head around. But I yeah. mean, people say, like, sometimes just it's way easier than writing a, a feature script. But I don't know. Is it? Yeah. Like, it I, just... I, well, they say that first you need to actually focus your time on creating the actual pitch Bible first, so what they call the Bible, before you even write. And they even encourage you to not, you don't need to right. write the pilot because they've got groups and like war rooms that do that they most tv is purchased by just the concept development itself so just spend more time on the tv bible so i'm just laying out like who the characters are i'm laying out the arcs per each episode and then i'm laying out the arcs per season to this between and, the, and laying out like how big the season can go mm -hmm. type thing um or how many seasons there are so it's been weird kind of thinking that way so big you know yeah yeah and, so and, uh expansive too very mm -hmm. with lots of expository you know between characters yeah. and world building and all that but that sounds like fun it sounds like yeah, that's that's exciting that's awesome fucking shit for me that's like making yeah. music it's awesome yeah so how's the writing process uh for you uh it's good <laughs> it's good it's it's fine it's a it's a what, what can i say it's a, it's, a, it's a process you know of course. um i i did i did have to uh take some time away from that just because of family things yes but um you know, I'm, I'm, I kind of came back last night and, you know, sort of just like, basically like what I don't do enough is just read the script front to back every time. Like it, it's, I get a different, I get a different feeling every time I, I read it. Like if there's like a period of time where I haven't really like, I don't know fully the beats of the script yet, I have to reread my script and going back and rereading the script usually gives me anxiety like, mm -hmm. I usually will go back and I'm like oh I want to rip every single page off of this like this this is this is nothing but then yeah. I recently came through and noticed that like the pace of of what I'm what I'm trying to make is is there it's mm -hmm. just I gotta I, I I just gotta make some tweaks you know there's there's just things that are that are missing that are, are inherently good it's just i i don't i also don't want to be that kind of script where like it feels like the story is just dragging a little bit right you know and if i can cut i'm gonna cut you know right. if i can just rip off a page or two and just all, all sorts of dialogue I, I will you know even though like a lot of the dialogue that i wrote is it sort of plays into the plot of the story as well so i can't really cut that stuff but everything else around it has been has been a process so i'm back into it yeah it's just you know it's just it like it, it sucks when you don't have your own space sure you know and it sucks when you when you are constantly met with all sorts of conditions especially in the household that you live in and yeah. that you have to be part of you know, and that just sort of takes away from your time. But right, a lot of and I hate to say it, it's hard to explain this because it's like a lot of people when they 
especially my mother, like when they think of writing, it's just like, oh, it's something that is like a neat little hobby for for some people or like it's a novelty thing when yeah. I'm re we're really treating this as work. This is work, you know, and it's hard for them to understand that. So for my time to have my privacy and my boundaries, you know, they're like, well, what the fuck are you doing? You're just staring at a wall in the office anyways. Right. Why, why are you why are you worried about me just coming into the office to grab <laughs> Uh, a stapler and you know coming yeah out, it's just like Yibby, you don't know you don't know you don't know it sounds like you need a writer's retreat my friend i do <laughs> i do and uh i i am thinking about spending money that i don't have on mm -hmm. a plane ticket to uh a buddy of mine's um place in california and he do it is, he is but he just needs to be to house it and watch his dog so right he was just like yeah man yeah, like if you can come out to california this won't be till february so okay uh, you know i i have a lot of a little bit of time yeah um so i might i don't know you know it's just i, I got i yeah i recommend it because like you said it, it isolates you and sometimes you really need that to be able to just write. Um, the other thing is that I've, I always, I think I've mentioned this several times on other podcasts has been that it takes away all the elements of um, distraction. You aren't able to be like, cause I find that when you're hitting a roadblock with writing or anything, it's easy to be like, well, I'm just going to go clean my room or, well, I need to do laundry or right. a list of have to do's basically. Um, but just simply removing all that forces you. And if you can do it, if possible, and I don't, this, this, I don't know, the two people I'm with are pretty introverted too. So it works out well, but you should consider going to meet up with other people, which I know may sound like, doesn't that conflict with my pro your current problem right now with people interrupting the process? But like, the nice thing is like, we're all in different rooms right now writing. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the night, we will like, we've done some table reads and shared, you know, our, what we've done that day or just shared things that we want to read and table read or just throw ideas at each other and it's right. i find that really helpful um for the for the process and just the simple fact that you're somewhere else i think makes it novelty and a change just, of scenery yeah, yeah change of scenery can really just throw some stimulation in there so yeah no it it definitely it definitely helps um yeah and i think like i i think like i'm I also developed the schedule too, and I usually don't do that. Like, yeah. and I just started recently developing a schedule because, you know, a 20 something year old stoner like me has, needs some sort of structure. You know, it's just like, it, it, I don't have a woman in my life. So <laughs> I need, I need some sort of structure where somebody has got to tell me what to do sometimes, uh -huh. you know? <laughs> so when I, I like that that's your answer because you don't have a woman in your life I you have no structure i have no i have no, <laughs> i can't be independent no I, i'm making a joke but i'm basically saying like making a schedule i didn't realize have benefited me way more than just like every single more and i guess i guess it's a stupid way of saying it because of course schedules uh, inherently make your work life efficient that's the fucking point of a schedule idiot but what I'm saying is, is that the efficiency that I am, that I am achieving is pretty fucking crazy. Considering mm -hmm. that without the schedule, I just usually go by, well, whoever is in the house, like I, you know, what I just talk to them and then whatever they are going to be doing, then I do my shit and then, you know, whatever. But if I just set a schedule for myself and they know the schedule, then you know, I, I'll just have that set time for my boundary. And it's worked out so far. Uh, granted, it's it's only been less than a week. 
Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's still a work in progress, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm getting back in it. And, um, it like, I didn't quite realize how important it is to write every single day. And it is yeah. very important, but what I do do is I write in my journal every single day. And mm-hmm. I have been since the beginning of this pandemic. Like it sort of made that like a thing. I don't know why I was like, you know what, man, it's hard for you to like understand and have a perspective on these emotions that you have. And you just, you feel like you're not like a lot of it's not valid when probably some of it is. Mm-hmm. And when I wrote it, in, when I write all of my emotions and everything in my brain in this journal, I then start to realize that, oh, I, I'm not going crazy. This is something to sort of freak out about. And a lot of times I write about writing. <laughs> It's kind of a weird meta fucking thing that I have going on. But a lot of times I write about writing and my relationship with it Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. understanding like, yeah, man, like you got to treat this as work. Like at the end of the day, like this is, this is what you want to do, but you got to, you got to develop some sort of structure with this. You can't just, you can't, I mean, you kind of sort of treat writing with respect in a way and give it its proper time. Not mm-hmm. just like, well, I guess I'll just write when, I don't know, when <laughs> when I'm done doing the dishes or right. when I'm done doing this, which are valid things for sure, probably, mm-hmm. you know, especially if you have that kind of like OCD tick in your brain where you have to finish something in order to complete the next thing. I get right. it, but I don't know. It's just like I, I, I'm very good at coming up with excuses for myself, too. Sure. So it's, I, it's like, it's yeah, the easy schedule for that. Back, basically. Yeah. And that's why you, you have to invent your own deadlines. For me, deadlines have been film festival, like submission dates. It's been competition dates. It's been like having a <laughs> retreat date. It's been because without it, as artists, we can tweak forever that's just the reality of it and so and especially if you know how you are and if you're the kind of person who will tweet forever you even more so need to build in these scheduling restrictions and 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 whatnot and so I just think it's you you know something you could maybe try is like pay the fee for submission for a festival for screenwriting so that ready or not you have to submit your script so, by that yeah. dead t- deadline, you know, or have a friend where you're like, I will send you a script on this time or date or whatever. Like you just, mm. you really have to, um, cause you'll just write forever and tweak forever and stuff like that. And it's the same thing. Like Ursley, I could probably in two months, look at it and still, and want to make more tweaks, you know, and want to, do something different or add more shit or whatever but like just at a certain point it's it's not like it's perfect at a certain point it's just good enough and sometimes that's good that's good enough (laughs) and you just need to be okay with that so um or you'll end up being the like the majority of the world which is nothing ever gets turned in because we're all so paralyzed by our fear of other people's judgments of our babies. So. Right. Or yeah. The failure thereof. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. So. It, 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 it's, it, it can kill you <laughs> that, mm-hmm. you know, that, that feeling of just, just pure, uh, pure failure. And also like, I didn't quite realize it, but I don't, give myself the time to I don't give myself the time to really like appreciate what I do because Mm -hmm. I'm I'm constantly like and I talked about this in therapy and she she mentioned it she kind of she kind of like called me out on it she was like you're doing the very thing that you hated doing in retail yet you're doing that very thing in the thing that you love and that can inherently destroy you which is which is self-doubt 
and mm-hmm. also the lack of confidence and like everything that I write and everything that I that I do, you know, especially like even working in art department on a film set, you know, like I get inside my own head and like I'll ask a director a question and if I get a funny look, then I, I should I, I then I, I get inside my own head and like then that it just it affects me for the entire fucking shoot until like the rap party when I mention it and the director's like what the fuck are you talking about I was <laughs> it was just like a that was just a weird thing like we just had a bad day that it, it, it shit happens you know so yeah. self doubt I get inside my own head and I've done that for for years and yeah. and I didn't notice I was doing it in in this in my career in in film. Mm-hmm. So, in a way, like, and it wasn't like I, I'm I'm disrespecting the film. It's not that. It's just like I'm sort of not giving myself the respect to really engage and have fun with the thing that I've dreamed of doing when I was a kid. And right. I'm, I'm doing it, you know. And it's right. just like, and my therapist is like, I think you probably thought that it would be a little brighter and more colorful when you when you enter the film industry, but what you failed to realize was it's also work yeah also it takes treat time that work, yeah you know, and it takes time and, yeah and then when she said that I was like oh yeah <laughs> I didn't <laughs> I didn't think about that but yeah sort there's sort of some truth in there well know? I I I'm a big I love listening to podcasts with people who have succeeded or you know made it or whatever and one of the things that they reflect back on is that they misjudged the amount of time they had to get to where they wanted to be right and so it always feels like you don't have much time and that you haven't gone far enough in the moment but then when you reevaluate it from the grand scheme of things it's not as much time has not has passed as you think it is you know so that's the same thing that's every year I do that self-reflection because in the moment we can we are hard on each ourselves in where because we have the bigger picture in mind and um we forget we're so in the process and we have such a big goal in mind that we don't have time to appreciate and live in the moment right and i i'd had countless conversations about this about living in the moment with friends recently and how to not just always live in the future and worry about the future um because if we do then we don't it we don't take the time to enjoy what we're doing and it's easy to just continue to beat ourselves up for not being where we want to be so but then my friend was saying like well if you do that then when you do get there that moment of happiness is so transi- transient and more than likely you're going to get there and be like now what right and all that time that you took to get there could have been moments that you just experienced and appreciated and was was happy to even have that experience in that mo- in that moment you know so yeah just that's that's what I'm going to do in 2022. Um, I really want to do a better job appreciating what's happening in the moment while it's happening um, instead of only fixated on where I need to be and where I should be. Should is so, you know thinking future and, and whatever um, because that's what's going to keep us going in the long run well that's where you see yourself you yeah know? yeah i get that yeah so but it's just like what i was saying when i was writing this reflection about ursley it's like i think about oh that was so long ago and you know i wish i was opening up right now for south by southwest or whatever you know that's worrying about the future and then i you know, reflect and I'm like, shit, like it's been less than a year and we were finished with a whole feature film and like, I should be thankful and happy and about where I am right now and how far we've been able to make it. Right. So 
yeah just don't don't be I, it's easy to say it but yeah don't be too hard on yourself and yeah it's very easy especially coming from a guy who is currently carless and living with his mother you know right like yeah really what do i have going for me but also i have a lot going for me I, you I do i yeah i do but it's it's hard because i don't have that like uh that mentality of just like well i'll just see where it goes you know it's just like i've always have to be like i i gotta know every step of the way or mm -hmm. else i'm gonna die <laughs> it's I don't control know. It's, it's control. what it is it's control it's wanting control but wanting... So many... oh go ahead sorry yeah wanting to control the outcome yeah right yeah and you can't we can't there's only a level of control that we have and everything else is we just have to let it be yeah yeah K sera sera <laughs> whatever will be will be whatever yeah. will be will be i yeah. i have to that's i'm i'm making that a goal and i i don't believe in new year's resolutions not really <laughs> you know well, a man, lot of people I'm have said it. that i'm going to get so much hate let me explain something to you. Okay. It's not that I hate uh, New Year's resolutions. It's just these are promises that you just want to tell yourself, and that's great. But sometimes the promises that I tell myself, sometimes I know I'm bullshitting myself as well. Yeah. You know? Because I've heard that I from a few people. It, when I keep it to myself and I make a promise to myself and I keep it to myself, that's when I excel. But then when I start telling everybody else, it's like, I'm going to give up pork. And then, you know, fucking Christmas comes around the next year and I'm having Christmas ham. You know, it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, who, who are you trying to fool here? Stop it. <laughs> just, just go in and do it or just don't, don't do it at all. And just, you know, right. but whatever a lot of people love the new year's resolutions because it puts themselves in check when they say it for themselves and i love that i love that for people i i absolutely do now sure. do new year's resolutions work for adam chase rennie not so much <laughs> <laughs> i thought i would quit smoking with new year's resolutions but it turned oh, out no. like i just well when i quit or when i quit smoking cigarettes i'm done mm -hmm. smoking cigarettes but there has been a time where i would work retail and i'm like Next year is going to be my New Year's resolution. Where I quit. <laughs> and then six months later, we get to back to school season or summer vacation season. And mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, I'm so stressed out. I got to smoke again, you know, and I, <laughs> I'm back in a big bad, big, bad way. And sometimes worse than the previous time, you know. So, yeah. again, it's just like it kind of I'm basically trying to loop this back around to um, to appreciating the the shit that is in front of you because all in all like and i, and I know addiction is a, is a completely different thing by the way i know I, I mentioned that and i feel i feel bad because i know addiction is is truly truly a, a terrible thing but in my instance new year's resolutions just sort of didn't serve a purpose for me especially in the grand scheme of how my family thought the news resolutions should be and they don't follow through with any of their new year's resolutions there's been years where they don't follow up with it i don't mean to call them out but it's true <laughs> yeah i just i don't know i i'm pretty good about i think it's just what's worse for you right for me new year's resolution is just a nice way to like put on to my vision board or whatever you would say and, yeah. and be like this is where what i would I like to work on this board. year you know so yeah. it's i don't think it's necessary and i think it's just how you set those resolutions right like i will get to this being very specific about it be i'll get to yeah be of. realistic yeah um and no set like something you know you can accomplish set something that and you know they tell you to you can set you set the goal but then you find something within that goal that you know you definitely can accomplish so like hey i want to lose 10 pounds well i know that i can work out 15 minutes a day like i know with the fact that 
I can do that, right? And so, mm-hmm. so having that as your sub goal and, and so that you can maybe reach that far-fetched goal, you know, so. Right, because as long as you, you know, keep putting time and effort and energy into it pretty soon it's like practice you know it's Mm -hmm. just like it's practice basically and as long as you practice what your resolutions are yeah then then in time it will it will come to yeah no i love that i absolutely love that um uh there's something else i was gonna say too and i forgot now but i mean um, it's very much like writing it's like like you said, oh. sometimes you just need to you just need to sit there for an, two hours and stare at the wall, and you that doesn't look like you're writing, but you are. I am. I you're promise you. Through those, I am. Yeah, you're shifting through that um, the cobwebs of ideas and trying to hold, find what sticks, and you need those that times. I mean, on this trip, I think I've spent. 60% of the time just reading stuff and staring off and thinking versus like actually physically writing anything. I think, in fact, it's all that. Yeah. It's really that. And, you know, I've started the first page for a different script and then I just jumped to an old script and read through it and then gone back to type some notes for another script. This is like chaotic, you know process of just organizing your thoughts and yeah it doesn't look like you're really accomplishing much to the normal human being who is who's not creative and stuff but that's as long as you're spending let's say an hour each day doing that you're going to get that much closer to what you're trying to accomplish so yeah and i hate working out so writing works for me (laughs) (laughs) i'm kidding no, but I, uh, I agree. No, I a hundred percent agree. And it works too. And it applies to any facet of, of creativity or training or developing even like, I, I feel like practice, I mean, the saying does go practice does make perfect. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, keep, keep doing, keep doing what you, what you do. And also like, I, I don't know if, if you feel the same way about writing, but it's so much harder beginning something again than finishing it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Uh, I can see that. You yeah. mean like when you say beginning something again, you you are saying picking something back up, right? Not like right. just starting period, right? You just starting period. It's starting period. I sometimes wish that that can happen. Like there's been a few times in the script where I'm just like, what if, what happens if I just delete it and, and it's gone, you know, I'll have to start from scratch again, you know? It's just yeah. Like, yeah. But why that's, that's, that's always been the part of me that always, that always like it calls it out. It's like, yeah, but why, why would you, why would you do that when you put in all this work, you put in this much time and this much dedication for you to come back and be like, oh, it's garbage. I'm just going to delete this. <laughs> just finish it, you know? But yeah. it's so much harder to when all, all you can do is just think about how you're trying to get back to the place that you originally wrote, whatever whatever that idea came from. And then mm-hmm. you try to repeat yourself doing that, but you're mm-hmm. you're not you're not getting the same results at all. Yeah, I get that. You know? I mean, that's what I was saying. How picking up these old scripts from two years ago, I'm not the same person. I'm not in the same mindset. So yeah, it is extremely difficult to pick up from. But then the caveat is maybe in that moment when you were writing it, the reason why you didn't even finish it in the first place was because like you needed a new perspective right so then picking it up two years later could really give you that new new eyes new perspective that you need to finish it i didn't even think about that (laughs) i honestly didn't even think about that but that's a good that's a good point yeah so it's it's just like with a little bit of time in between that, I just sort of developed new, new set of 
I guess not a new set of perspectives, but mm-hmm. a, a little bit of a change of perspective because last week, Adam is different than a month ago, Adam. Of this course. Year ago, Adam, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. How many, so what's your pattern usually? Do you usually at least finish a first draft and that before shelving it for a little bit and then coming back to it? Or are you a finished well, this parts is my of first it? script. So okay. I don't, I don't really have, much of a process other than like just dedicating at least like here's what I do do and it's sort of worked out for me if I know I'm not going to be writing much or probably anything at all I just take the time to read the script and I just read back the script regardless how I feel about it I have to read the script Mm -hmm. because there's something there and usually every time I read it, that's when something sparks up again. And I'm like, right. oh, I'm just kidding. I'm going to go right back into it. But then there's other times where I do read it again. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Are you? Like, and I'm just staring at a wall for two hours. Again. Right. And well, you know? that's where I was saying that having a writing group really helps because then you're hearing it not from your own voice, but having other people read it out loud, just that process. Hmm. I think sparks ideas pretty fast, you know, just hearing it. Like I, in root, we picked up in root and table read it um, day before yesterday. And the moment the words started to come out, I'm like, dear God, like I need to change this and this and this and this, and this is not feeling right. And, you know, especially when you've just read other people's scripts out loud then yes, all that insecurity floods in and whatnot, but it also forces you to to kind of see how you can improve your script a lot faster. Does that make any sense? It does. It does make yeah. sense because you you just need because it's all really about perspective. Really. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know we're I, I know we're kind of repeating ourselves, not really, but really like having that perspective that you don't have really it does it does a lot for your line of work our line of work especially for writing because really like what we need more than anything is constructive criticism and constructive feedback rather than just like reading something that a stranger would read that like i don't know like that was like kind of the only thing that i like disagreed with the whole like Snyder thing with the beat sheet, like the book. I love the beat yeah. sheet. I yeah. always use the beat sheet. Still. Yeah. But I'm like in the story in the process of it. And he says that like sometimes I just give my script to strangers and I pitch my script to strangers. And I'm like, yeah, but I wouldn't. <laughs> like I just for me, it, because I'm so insecure and so vulnerable that I need other people who are writers and are who know ah, I see what you're saying. Can yeah. read this and just have a justifiable opinion and say, oh yeah, no, I know what you did wrong. You just did X, Y, and Z when you were supposed to do bop, bop, bop. You know, like I, I love that. Instead of just having some schmo read it who never right. done writing ever in his life or right. even like likes movies <laughs> right. who would read it and just be like, I, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't sound good. It's just like, oh, right. okay, cool, I guess. <laughs> you know, some people's, it just not everyone's perspective is the kind of perspective that that you want applies to your work. Sure, you know. Sure, and this is where that trust comes from. Just like finding people that you trust that you can just lay out really terrible work that you, or work that you think is terrible, and they're able to get actual constructive feedback to to go back and apply directly to your to your work. Yeah, I can see that. But I also see the value of what he's saying about like just pitching it. I've, I've got to try that um, because the in the end, too, it's um, yes, the, I think what artists do is they think that it's only about the art. And yes, ultimately, you should write from a place of your heart. But if you're not able to succinctly tell the world what you're trying to do, and have them understand it then there is something to be said that maybe you haven't fleshed out your idea enough you know and and ultimately we are creating a a consumer product 
and we need the audience to be able to want to watch or read or whatever that product. So there is something to be said about just pitching it to random strangers because they are your audience. Yeah, no, you're right. You're absolutely yeah, right. But there's, there's got to be a way that you can universally exactly. communicate that between writers and right, but that's, audience. But maybe it's not at that pro at that time and place when you're in that particular process that you would do it, right? So maybe for you, you wouldn't do it when you haven't gotten a first draft yet. Maybe you would do it when right. you're at the final stages of the script and you like pitch it or or it's at the seat of the idea or so so I think that's where it varies. I don't I don't think that pitching to strangers is not is it I I kind of want to try it um to do that just to see how it's but it's scary. It is. Course. It is. Um yeah. because it's a place of vulnerability. And right. Also it's, it's you don't know you don't know how much you also don't know how much the other person's going to give. And I know that right. sounds bad, but it, you can't trust the fact that somebody's just going to give their full 100% honest opinion or even their opinion at all. You know, maybe they yeah. just don't even have any feedback. And sometimes that's fine. Sometimes, you know, shit like that happens and it, that's okay. But other times. That's interesting. Sorry. So, uh, somebody just wrote, I have learned I better not compare my writing with other writers because I start paralyzing my creative process. Right. You're that's, that's also the other thing I wanted to mention as well. You're right. Shout out to, uh, Melissa. Uh, yeah. thank you for writing that. That's awesome. I, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Being, you get paralyzed, especially when you're other, like in the echelon of other fucking writers in front of you. And you start being vulnerable and then they see that and they're, they're making notes on your own, your vulnerability that, sure. that could drive me insane. That could yeah. really push me to the point where I'm like, yeah, I kind of don't want to do this anymore now. Yeah. You know? but, and so that's why you have to be very selective. specific and selective with yeah. who you let into that inner circle. Right. So it has to, it has to be people that you trust whose opinions matter to you who you know won't directly attack or that we i think it there's something to be said when you're both giving and taking does that make any sense it does. like if you're only there and it's expected that only you are vulnerable then right. it's a lot harder to share and it's a lot easier to feel like you're comparing yourself or whatever. But if you're going in with the mindset that we're all vulnerable together, we're mm -hmm. all trying to create work and trying to share and trying to together help each of our different projects, then just having that perspective, I think, will prevent the paralyzing of the creative process, you know? So it's like you saying, I don't ever want to just pitch to a random stranger because that's, you're you're being extremely vulnerable and you don't know if that random stranger can treat and respect that vulnerability right but yeah if you were with a group of people who you know will respect that process then i think it it can really be helpful but i totally get it like i had that experience when i took my first graduation gra uh, graduate level writing class and every single person had been writing for years and were significantly better skill wise than I was. And that's the whole sink or swim moment, right? It was in, I think in that moment, it was easy to be like, oh, I never want to share my stuff again because it's so bad compared to everybody else's. But then you get over that hump and yeah. you grow from it you grow from it you're like well okay I don't want to be the worst in the class I don't want to be that so so then that's why they always say like you got to surround yourself like the, the the closest people you surround yourself should be better than you because it makes you better because you don't want to be outshadowed you know so yeah. no I get that absolutely yeah. So, yeah, we you you can't you it's really hard. <sighs> Taking feedback is just it's it's hard because it's, it's a difficult 
yet sensitive process. Oh yeah, and totally. Feedback is truly it could it could really make or break you when it comes to feedback. And you just don't you can't you don't know how other people are going to give you that said feedback unless like you said, you surround yourself with the people who maybe are not the same mindset as you are, but at least understand the craft well enough that they treat it with respect and understand respect. that right. other people with their vulnerabilities doesn't make them inferior to you because right. you, you know what to do. You already have that experience, but yeah, some other people who let's say are writing the first script <laughs> might not have that luxury. Right. You know, well, of just like, yeah, yeah, I can trust that I can give it to this person and this person won't just necessarily say, oh, yeah, it's good. It's fine. Whatever. And then they, you know, give it a pass or they just break it down to the point where it just doesn't really make sense with some of the notes that they give. You know, right. it's, it's really, if anything, it's just like trying to belittle your script or, uh, you know, demean it, if, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's those kinds of people too. Sure. So, so I think the, I was gonna say like so I think part of the process is knowing yourself well enough to know how to shift through that feedback because not every not all feedback is good and you need to take feedback with a grain of salt and also the way people give feedback is different all across the board. So um, I learned a lot about feedback just through the editing process, like. You know, I have had so many times when the feedback was like this, cut this whole scene out, you know, and I had to really go in deep and understand, like, what does that actually mean? That means they just don't see why this particular scene is important and you need to, maybe that there's not enough seeds planted enough to warrant this scene to be important. And, and but if it is important, then you need to go through and find out what are the seeds that need to be planted to make that scene important. So, but most people will not elaborate. They can't, they, it's, it's a feeling, right? And so they may just say, just cut it all out. Or um, the, the easiest solution is that just, just take it out, you know? Mm -hmm. But so that's where you have to just go back and really dissect, you know, what, what does each of this feedback mean? So like, yeah, oh, this, this, this monologue is boring. Why? okay, I think it's, that's what it is. It's just have to, during the feedback process, ask why as much as you possibly can if you don't understand that feedback immediately, you know? Right. Well, because you're kind of owed that. And that's sort of like that applies to, I feel like that can apply to writing as well, you know? it's just Yeah, like, it's, every, why, it's every process of feedback. Why? Why yeah. that feedback? Why you do know? you hate and, this character? And if why? Yeah. yeah. And if they can't articulate it, nor or just ultimately say, I just think it's bad, you know, <laughs> then it's just like, okay, but that's not, that doesn't help me. You know, like the feedback is to improve. Right. Feedback is to I think just you, listen. But <laughs> I think it's, on the, I think it's a responsibility of the creator to be able to ask those questions, the correct questions that pulls that information out of people, you know? So, yeah, I hate this character. Okay, can you tell me why? No, I don't know. Well, is it because that character has annoying um, lines or is that person? No, no, no. It's just like, I would. I don't believe in that character. Okay, cool. So when you mean you don't believe in that character, are you just saying, right. you seem you saying just, yeah, you have to, like... sometimes you have to pull it out of people because they legitimately, legitimately just don't know how to articulate what they're trying to say. Because they're just, just based off of feeling. There right firing. yeah right yeah so i think th that's what happens when you get really good about feedback because you've done it like i'm pretty good about feedback now because i've had to ask for so much feedback all the time to improve um oh yeah when someone judges yeah. your script it is very subjective not always up to totally yeah, it is very subjective. And so that's where you, you have to make your best judgment what feedback you choose to take or not. Um, but in the end, you know what? I've That's been very helpful when it comes to whether to know something is subjective or objective. If I'm getting multiple feedback and it's the same feedback, like in the same spot, 
I can easily then, um, it's like if you're in a relationship and you keep breaking up and like, and you keep thinking it's other people, but then like you go back and analyze and like, maybe it is you, you know, it's kind of that. So like, I, that's why I like to get feedback from a, a huge number of people and then go through and kind of like graph it out, you know, because 80% of the time, if you've got five people saying they have a problem with the specific scene, it's you, you know, and you just got to figure out what's not working about this. But so I think that's the best way to judge whether something's a subjective or objective. If something is just a taste mm. thing, or if there's something seriously wrong about a certain part of your script or your edit or whatever, right. there, there is always a pattern that comes out. Um, I, at least that's been my experience with feedback just graphing it out and seeing like, okay, where's the bell curve going? Okay. This, these many people don't understand this concept, then it's gotta be something on my end. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think the problem with people who aren't used to feedback is they just assume like, Hey, it's a direct attack on my art or they don't understand this art and they go in thinking that, but if you go in with an open mind and say, and don't assume that. And just think that, hey, if they're going to take the time to give you feedback, I hope that 80% of these people mean well and they actually want to help you. So if I don't agree with my, that feedback, let me dig in and maybe I'll find out what the real problem is Speaking about this particular right. feedback. Yeah, type thing. So, because giving feedback is work. That's a lot of work. I mean, I get asked... Right to give feedback all the time and unless I have a lot of time like I it's so much work to give someone good feedback you know so if somebody's yeah. going to spend the time to give you feedback I feel like they're they are coming at it from like a positive space to really help you improve you know but it, yes it's so easy to just go through especially if it's not what you expect or hope for you know feedback wise um, one of the harshest feedback that I got from Ursley was like from the distributors themselves. They pretty much were like, this is not finished whatsoever. You need to cut 10 minutes from this. And like, nobody's going to care about any of the characters. And I was like, great. <laughs> yeah. It hurt. It hurt so much. You walk I, away. Yeah. Thinking, uh, and go to lunch regularly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I, all that you want to do is just like curl up into a ball. I yeah. Get that I, I think I like from that, I got my first reaction was like i was angry you Fuck know yeah. but i was angry i'm like people fucking get the script and like they are gonna get this and like there's a market for this and like and then from anger it was a sadness like <laughs> oh the five stages of yeah the, of it, I, you go through the five stages of grief and then you I accept agree. it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you finally are like, okay, I'm in the right mindset, and see, and let, let's see. Okay, they don't why, and then you go go back and and dig. But I don't know. That's I feel like everybody goes through that when it comes to feedback because it is you're being open and you're being vulnerable, and anytime you're being either, it's going to hurt. <laughs> Well, right. Yeah. Constructive or not, it may, it might hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But you, you said it though, like earlier, um, like to just surround yourself with the people who you can trust to give you the feedback that you might be looking for, or maybe not be looking for. It's just, you know, that person's honesty, you know, that right. person's like coming from a good, good place. place. Yeah. Sometimes there are just companies and studios and, executives and even people who just will review your shit and and you ask their feedback and you're just like and they give you shit that makes you feel less than yeah yeah but you know in that moment when you say it's funny because we literally had this conversation yesterday camille eva and i she's like what she hates is when there's critics and critics are just like there to try to tear apart your film or whatever and you have to think in those moments, you have to think, hey, at least I wrote something. <laughs> at, least at least you are talking about my work. Have you done your own work? You know, right. that type of thing. So I think in, in those moments, you just have to have that perspective. Like, great, I'm glad you're talking about my work, mm -hmm. right? 
So like, at least I did that. I, I think Eva pointed out um, Coppola. I think somebody, some critic came onto a set and was talking about, oh, like an alternative ending and this and that. And, and I think Coppola says something like, let's see you go into the jungle and spend a year and come out with a movie. What say you then, you know? Yeah. So I think in those moments, you just kind of have to take it with a grain of salt, but also just come at it like that. Like in the end, you should just be proud of yourself that you even got to the point to get feedback. Well, right. right? Exactly. And in the fact that they spent the time to watch it, I mean, yeah, they don't have anything good to say about it, but they spent the time to watch it. Uh, thank yeah. you for your participation. <laughs> thank you for your participation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, you are, you watch my work, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> so who gives a shit what uh, Rotten Tomatoes or, or anybody yeah. has to fucking address because yeah. it's all going to be the same. They watched it and they're talking about it. Yes, they're talking like about it. The whole point of it, right? Like, yeah. It's just, it, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I always, because sometimes, like, I take it to heart whenever, like, especially when it comes to feedback and reviews coming from strangers and shit like that. Um, oh, we got another comment. Uh, oh, Marco, I understand one. that. The worst part hang is, on, you on, send your... the worst part is yeah. you send your script to people in the industry waiting for a feedback, only to find out that two weeks went by and they haven't read your script yet. What do you do? Yeah, you just got to I mean, you have to um, think of it for with a grain of salt, especially if you're asking someone that you whose feedback you will respect. Chances are, the reason why you you wanted to send it to that person in the first place because it is because they are industry leader and if they're an industry leader chances are they're going to be extremely busy you know so it's one of those things i think when you send stuff i always will put a disclaimer to it like if i send it to my friends and stuff i'll be like hey i need feedback by this date if you are able to give me feedback by this date then i would love to have your feedback if you're not able to what is another deadline you might be able to, to meet? And then I'll see if I, if that feedback makes sense to me to get from you. Does that make any sense? So like, for example, Eva, I had sent my film to her to uh, critique and she came back very honestly and was like, look, I'm in a, but she's the minority. She actually came back to me saying like, hey, I'm not in a place right now to give you feedback immediately type thing. Like, so don't expect that. So I think you just have to be a bit, uh, I've learned to be more proactive and saying like, hey, give them a deadline. Hey, I am looking for feedback and I need it in three days. And the reason I need it in three days is because I need to submit this to go to post and blah, blah, blah. Can you do that? Oh, you can't, cool, move on, find somebody else that, that can. There's plenty of people who want to give you feedback. So, yeah. So I think when you blanket send out things for feedback, you're going to have to expect that some people just don't have time or it's just not the right time. And, and it just sucks, you know? And I've done that to plenty of people saying like, look, I'm in the, in the middle of production right now the fastest that I can possibly get to this is like in a month or two, take it or leave it, you know? And so then you yourself just need to judge whether or not that's worth your while. Right. So I think, I think go approach it that way. Next time you send, send feedback, give someone a deadline and see if they can even match it. If they can't find somebody that can, you know? So I, that's my feedback or that's my opinion for that because yeah, getting feedback is difficult. Um, it's that's why I'm saying if you can approach feedback with an open mind, knowing that people who are going to spend the time, because there's a lot of time to give you feedback are going to hopefully take it coming. They're coming from their heart to try to improve it. So even if it's negative feedback, like they're not, it's so time consuming that I feel like they're going to spend the time to try to give you something that they hope will help improve. That the... is half-assed. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want that shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because then that's, that's almost disrespecting your time in, in a way. Yeah. In, in their time, really, you know, it's just yeah. like, Hey, okay. If you've got nothing, if you got truly nothing to say, then 
how much time can you give me? And sometimes that is the approach is just, you got to be specific. Yeah. You yeah. Know, be very like specific. You, how much time can you give me? Yeah. You know, I, I, I back in 24 hours. Yeah. You know, I value your though. opinion a lot. And if I don't get your feedback, I don't feel like I can trust myself with this body of work. Do you have time to read this within by this deadline type thing? And no hard feelings if you can't, but I really need it by this day because past this day, it's useless to me. You know, I've done that so much, so many times because th- there are deadlines in the world. You know, you can't wait forever for feedback. So, um, and I've had people who are like, oh, I have time now. And you're like, hey, thank you so much for wanting to give me feedback now, but it's kind of past the point where I'm able to make those changes. So I'm, I'm happy that you want to, but at this moment, it probably won't be worth your time because we're already past the point where any of those, any changes that I could make are like it can't anymore. It's just, that's the reality of it. So yeah, give, be very specific when you ask people for anything. That's something I've definitely learned. And I, being on the receiving end of it, I appreciate when people are very specific. I, I get asked a lot, can you wash my short? Can you wash this and stuff? And I will be very honest. I'll be like, look, like, Soonest I can get you feedback is two weeks from now, or soonest I can do it is this time and stuff. And um, and if they are okay with that, then 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 it's up to me to also be like, by the time it gets to that point, I can I if I just can't do it, writing them an email and being like, look, I'm sorry, I tried, and I the next time I will be able to get you feedback is three weeks from now, or this came up or whatever, you know. So. Um, that's just how it goes and there's no harm in in doing that too like uh, i feel like because that that's been my fear too is like because i I, i'm gonna be honest with them they're gonna think i'm a piece of shit (laughs) you know what i mean it's just like i tell them like hey is it cool if i give you this feedback a week from now because i'm a i'm working or b i'm I'm, I, i got other shit that that's happening and you know, sometimes like they, they look at that and they're like, oh, well, I, I kind of needed it by like tonight or tomorrow or whatever. Right. And you're like, sorry, Sooner, dude. You just, yeah, you, I inherently just feel bad. But that's just like me just feeling guilty all the time. That's yeah, just, but that's that, a personal but, problem. But that's <laughs> that, that's the thing. That's time. And we we all have limited time, you know, especially if you're yeah somebody who you want feedback from, because more than likely that person's got a lot of shit going on for them, too, you know for you to want their feedback. So, um, and I think that if you become a person too, that's really, I give and take, right. It can't always just be take, 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 take. So I'm very good about, Hey, I, if that person's giving me feedback, the moment they do the, and ask me for feedback, I'm there, you know? So if you're also good about, um, giving it a uh, bartering, you know, Hey, I need feedback now. If you give me feedback, I know you're working on this, or I know you need help on this. Like, let me, let me help you with that. So going from the heart of like, how can I add value to your life first before like asking for something, I think is very helpful too, when it comes to people who are ridiculously busy that you want feedback from, you know, like, Hey, I can help you with this. If you please help me with feedback from this, you know? So and that works sometimes. It totally that, that works. Does, that does work uh, because yeah. you're sort of paying each other's time for yeah for doing that. Time uh, is money. Time is money, man. Yeah. And money requires time. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, great questions, though, guys, and yeah. um, thank you so much. Yeah, we'll probably be doing because yeah. time is money. So time we'll probably and, land uh, it soon. And your boys got to do laundry. So. Yeah, I got to get back to writing. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I got to do that as well. Um, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that has been episode sixty nine of the Get Realisms podcast. I uh oh, we have uh earlier episodes on earlyfilm.com. All all things uh Get Realisms, Get Realisms.com. Pick up your book today. Uh, get your poster. Get all the goodies. Uh, stickers, t-shirts now. Get it? Yeah. Why and we're happy to hot? answer your questions. Like we love it when you guys participate. Yeah. So if you ever have like a question that you want us to answer, feel free to email us at two at getrealisms at gmail.com and stuff. Ha ha. 
Eve. Yes, yes 69 Eve. It is. <laughs> I, I was, just got I was waiting with for Eve. Somebody Eve. make a 69 joke. Of course. Waiting. Of course. I'm yeah. waiting. It would be Eve. <laughs> Eve uh, is a script supervisor that I just worked with. Amazing from um, Mash Movie Cam production. So, rad. yes, yes. Thank you for watching, Eve. <laughs> uh, getrealisms.com, uh, earsleyfilm.com, and I think that's it, Christine. Yeah. Um, Watch out for news about the release of the film right. at some point since and also, I'm about to finish it all. Yeah. And also, please, everybody, uh, send in questions to uh, Facebook as well. Anybody on Facebook, you want to you wanna send in a question, we get it answered. We're, we, we always get it answered no matter what. So send it to us. Uh, we love it. And we love you. Um, uh, hopefully it. it's helpful and interesting. And yeah, write, yeah. create. That's well, what the point of this is. I for. know for me, this is this is fun. I look forward to this shit all the time. And also, I do learn a lot of shit coming from this as well. This yeah. is sort of like like for you, another ther therapy session for me. This is our daily. This is our weekly therapy session, everybody. And you guys it get is. to experience it. <laughs> you get to experience it and also like probably share the same experiences with us too probably yes. you know you probably maybe not in film but in some creative facet where feedback is everything and you don't get the kind of feedback that you want and you just you know you stress out you get crazy so that's it I, i'm done and i gotta i gotta attend one so we gotta go ladies and gentlemen thank you so much instagram and thank you facebook Bow, 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 bow.